first question, what if queen takes e2, then rook e1. If you move the queen, then there's a really nice checkmate using the fact that the rook is pinned on the e-file. We actually move the queen. Rook e6 wins, but this is really cool as well. Queen d7 check. King f8, and now just checkmate into just a sacrifice, and now f3. This is really the key reason why I wanted to go through this game, because in the last 26 minutes, it's like Magnus has changed his mind. After h3, g4, he plays f3. So really, the question is, where will this go? Well, it won't go there anymore, so it'll probably go to d3. And what are we saying? White can begin a kingside attack. A fascinating change of direction. Magnus makes a decision now to try and lock up the queen side, playing a5. A really cool move. b5, blocking up the queen side, and now he castles. Even though there's a white pawn on a5, white's king is pretty safe. Having survived yesterday's game against Kovalev, Carlsen now has white against Indian Grandmaster Ganguly. The game began e4, c5, and we have a knight off today. Magnus chooses h3. In the past, he has played g3, bishop e2, bishop c4, bishop g5, even a3 against Wojtaszek. He played bishop g5 against Peter Zwidler. h3 today. E5, knight b3, bishop e7, and now the point of h3 is to start a kingside attack with g4. h6, bishop e3, knight d7. Here, Carlsen spends a lot of time and decides to play a4. Very interesting. After a4, 22 minutes thinking, he's saying maybe I don't castle queenside. Maybe I'll go bishop g2 and then castle kingside. So already a very interesting move b6 played, and now f3. This is really the key reason why I wanted to go through this game, because in the last 26 minutes, it's like Magnus has changed his mind. After h3, g4, he plays f3. So really, the question is, where will this go? Well, it won't go there anymore, so it'll probably go to d3. And what are we saying? White can begin a kingside attack. A fascinating change of direction. Let's see how this game continued. Queen c7, h4, knight f8. White's position looks pretty nice already. Rook g1, g5 coming, coming next. So even though the pawn is on a4, white has managed to get his kingside pawns as well moving. And g5, it looks like we have a kingside attack. And it's not so clear where black will put his king as well. After g5, take, take, knight d7. Knight h5 not possible because knight d5 and b6 is attacked by the knight and the bishop. So not knight h5, knight d7 played by Ganguly, knight in and queen c6. Big decision. Not to even swap, not to even get rid of this monstrous knight. Queen c6, queen d2, knight g6. The question really is where to put white's king, where to put black's king. Magnus makes a decision now to try and lock up the queen side, playing a5. A really cool move. b5, blocking up the queen side, and now he castles. Even though there's a white pawn on a5, white's king is pretty safe. Rook c8, king b1, knight c5. Still, the question is now for black's king, where does he put it? Well, you can't castle king side, or else rook h1, and then queen h2 will be made very soon. After knight c5, bishop e2, bishop d8 played. Nothing to worry about, knight takes b3, because after c takes b3, rook can go to c1. It turns out white will be using the queen side, not black. Bishop d8, now Magnus decides to take, and after take, black's king is still in the middle, so it's time to open it up with f4. e takes, bishop takes. Now, first question, why not knight takes? Because maybe after this and after bishop e7, many squares around the middle are controlled. Rook d8 could be next. It's not so obvious how white can break through in this position. Bishop f4, bishop e7, because, well, really, I'm not even sure what uh, black can play. What if he plays c4? Maybe the queen can come to b4. Queen can come to c3, eyeing g7. If you go rook h7, the pressure builds. You could just put the bishop back on e3, the rook can come to e1. 
knight can come to b6 in the future. Bishop e7, 13 minute thing, difficult move to make. Bishop e7, after knight takes e7, king takes, bishop d6 check. If you go back, queen c3 rather than e5. Queen c3 first, just putting the question to the black pawns on c5 and g7. e5 could be next, with bishop f3 as well coming in. After queen c3, defending g7, bishop back, because white wants to put a major piece on d6, maybe the rook or the queen. b4, queen d3, eyeing a6, and also preparing to come down here, or planning to come to d6 c4, queen d6, queen e4. The problem with taking the e4 pawn, why can put a rook on the e-file? Rook d4 first, really cool move by Magnus. Now first question, what if queen takes e2, then rook e1. If you move the queen, then there's a really nice checkmate using the fact that the rook is pinned on the e-file. We actually move the queen, rook e6 wins, but this is really cool as well, queen d7 check. King f8, and now just checkmate into just a sacrifice, beginning with queen c8. After take, rook d8 is mate. Rook d4 is a cool move, black went queen b7. Just retreating, because you cannot take the bishop on e2, queen b6, and now retreating again, queen a8. You can't take, because after take, then b7, you can't stop it. The bishop on g3 controls b8. After queen a8, rook d1, rook h1, and bishop e1. Magnus says no trade of the rook. After bishop e1, the bishop can take on b4, the queen can come to d6. Knight e5, bishop takes b4, a pair of rooks come off, but the bishop is now improved, it is on b4, queen c6. No trade again, because the black king is still in the middle of the board. Queen b5, defending the e5 knight, bishop c3, hitting the e5 knight again. Rook c5, defending again. Magnus now plays a move which looks like it exposes the king, but more importantly, it attacks the rook. So let's attack the rook, beginning with b4. You cannot on pass on because the queen on b5 is hanging, and Ganguly is now lost. He played knight d3 in the game. Well, if we look at rook c7, then queen takes e5, the knight drops. If you go knight d7, because you cannot take the rook, then let's actually get rid of the knight because it is defending the rook. So we can play this sacrifice and then queen takes c5. We will be up a piece. If the queens come off, if you go king c6, no need to take on g7, just go bishop d4. And you are a piece up after b4, knight d3. Sacrifice, it doesn't end up doing anything. Magnus played c takes d3. Bishop takes d3 is good as well because after take, queen takes c5, you're up a rook. After c d3, rook d5, nothing to see here. d takes c4 and Ganguly resigned. He's just down a piece. What happens after a trade? Take queen c4. Well, queen a2 check isn't really a threat. So you just uh, solidify maybe queen d4. You can go king c1, bishop a4 check, bishop c2. Lots of possibilities, there is nothing for black in this position. So a nice victory after holding, luckily, against Kovalev the day before. Check out one video here and check out another video over here. If you enjoyed this video, consider liking it and subscribing to the channel at the same time. Don't forget to hit that bell to get notified each time I release a new video. Thanks for watching, until next time.